uh, it started well with winning the first heat. A small ignition problems uh, made me to retire the second. But on the third heat, you know, I saw I saw uh, Dave Gigan going over. I was like, okay, there we left my, my hardest competition. Of course, I'm sorry for Dave. I, I didn't you know I didn't feel so bad about it because you know there is four heats and three best counts. Now I can relax a little bit. Went out on the restart again. And everything was alright, everything should be straightforward. And, and then one of my Norwegian friends blew it over on the next start and now they just cancelled the heat, no points. <laughs> to put it this way, I feel like the organization or so-called organization are taking away my chances to win the worlds. Amazingly, the repairs to Ronald's boat have held. He comes back into starting position as the final heat begins. Ronald starts in third to last position. Incredibly, within one lap, Ronald has moved up the field by 13 positions to sixth place. Cornering well, Ronald pushes on for fifth place, while Norway's Rolf Magnusunder and Britain's Dave Giggins battle down the straight neck and neck to the turn boy, each daring the other to power off before the turn. Taking the outside track, Dave Giggins cuts it tight to Rolf's boat as they turn, barely missing each other. Giggins has the edge, pulling ahead into pole position. Ronald, now in fifth place, pushes his boat to the edge, cutting it incredibly tight to the turn boy and powering out of the turn. The repaired boat is holding up to the battering from its pilot remarkably well. The pilots like nothing more than trying to get a nose ahead, side by side, pitting their boats and their nerve against each other. As they battle for the best angle on the turn boy, they push the boats beyond the safety line to the edge of control. Ronald still corners well, but on the straight he seems to be facing a power drop-off. Number 33, driven by Rolf Magnusunder, has made good progress, but Giggins in number 65 is constantly at his heels, with Frodo Sundahl following up at the rear. has slipped back to sixth position, but he still fares well on the corners, although the damaged boat is definitely suffering in the straight. It's clear that Ronald can't get enough speed, probably because the repairs are taking on water. Number four easily pulls ahead of Ronald's boat. He's clearly in trouble. As Ronald falls back to seventh position, his good friend Magnusunda continues his head-to-head -head fight with Giggins. Giggins goes wide as he and Magnusunda take the turn boy. They're still nose-to-nose -nose with nothing to divide them. The two boats, Italian and British, are as well matched as their Norwegian and British pilots. Ronald takes the turn boy. He's fought to get back in the race after a dreadful crash and recovered from 23rd to 7th place in only one heat. An incredible show of determination and skill by this Dutch powerboat champion. As the chequered flag goes up, Dave Giggins takes pole position, followed by Rolf Magnusunder, with Frode Sundahl in third place. Ronald had to drop out of the competition, having achieved so much against the odds, his engine finally failed him. Dave Giggins richly deserves the title of world champion, having achieved a consistently good position in every heat of the race. 
As the winners celebrate, Ronald's team analyzed the engine failure. It was a totally unforeseen throttle problem. Uh, it's not supposed to be here. It should be there. There was the trouble. A simple failure after so much effort robbed Ronald of a well-earned place in the race. After weeks of preparation and an incredible battle against the odds, Ronald and his team just have to find a way of coping with the disappointment. Before the winners can claim their titles, their boats have to be scrutinized by seven international judges. <laughs> One of the main design parameters to be checked during the scrutinizing is the diameter of the timing ports. The judges check the width of the ports using specially made gauges. The aim is to keep the amount of fuel in the engine within specified limits. Then it doesn't, so it's okay. I like to give it back. Once the engines and boats have been examined, they return to the pilots. Well, this engine has just been passed a technical inspection, so now we're declared world champions, and uh, obviously we're very pleased for everyone who's involved. <coughs> Rolf, this guy here who came second, is the guy who tuned it, so obviously I'll thank him for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. I didn't really expect it to pass because you know, <laughs> I thought I put it in some illegal stuff. But okay. and, the, and the guy who owns the engine, thanks very much. So all in all, it's been a good weekend and something we didn't expect. So, you know, now we're going to enjoy it. So, thanks a lot. Yeah, I, it's really good to, to sit down and relax a little because the last few weeks uh, have taken quite a bit of me. I'm really uh, exhausted and I uh, feel like uh, going away for a couple of days, holiday, and relax a little. But also we are already uh, looking forward to the next World Championships. We have already made contact uh, with the, the boat builder to rebuild the boat and we start all over again and hope we can win next year. Topmarks brengt dadelijk het bijzondere verhaal van een klassieke Britse sportwagen, de Morgan.